Welcome back to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good, and we love talking about the topics of authenticity, accountability, and so much more. That's why we're honored to have with us Dr. Michelle Denise Gillis. She's the founder of the North Star. How are you doing? I am so excited to be here. It's a beautiful day. It's the beginning of a whole new month. Jeremy, thank you for having me. Absolutely. And so when you talk about what you do, let's start with you being an educator and then getting into this work of authenticity and accountability and so much more. So give us a little bit of your backstory. Absolutely. So I started my career off so many years ago as a high school teacher, did that for four years, ended up going back to school to earn my doctorate, and then worked uh, for a small private university in Florida for many years. Started off as an instructor, um, went all the way to a vice president's position. Um, everything was great. I love being a teacher. I still identify as being a teacher, but teaching changed. I moved to, to from Florida to Tennessee, um, kind of dipped my toe back in the water with education, but I wanted more. And um, many entrepreneurs will understand this feeling of knowing that there's a ceiling and wanting to move beyond that ceiling. And I thought there has to be a way to take my skill set to a different group of people. So the North Star was born. What's interesting at least for me, is that I found um, in the classroom, but also in the real world, right, that we all learn and grow in safe environments, um, in environments where we can be ourselves, where we don't have to come forward with any pretense or facade. And, you know, knowing that kind of in the back of my mind and seeing it play out in real life, you know, beyond the classroom, it was very interesting to me to see women engage with each other, especially at networking events. And it was so disingenuous. And there was this um, almost this panicked energy as women were trying to connect with each other. And, you know, no offense at all, but it was a very masculine, um, aggressive display. And it just wasn't working and it, and it didn't feel right for me. So I created the North Star, giving women an opportunity to network, although we're not a networking group, we're actually an anti-networking group, but it gives women an opportunity to connect, to be real. Um, majority of my members are small business owners. So when we come together, yes, there's this natural, you know, this is who I am, this is what I do, but we don't have to present ourselves um, we don't have to present our false selves. We can come as we are. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. Um, I have dishes, dirty dishes in the sink. <laughs> you know, I'm running a business. Like I'm not perfect, and um, and that kind of takes the pressure off. And I've also found that when we come together in these like fun activities, whether it's aerial yoga or whether it's ghouls night out that we just had, um, it's a relaxed atmosphere and relationships are born. And from those relationships, business comes. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty cool. I love what I do. <laughs> well, and, and so dive in when you look at the North Star, obviously, as you mentioned, it's not networking, but there is a component of relationship building. You've got coaching, you've got podcasts, you've got events, you've got, there's a lot to it. So how do you unpack all that you do with the North Star? So first of all, when I hear you say it, like it exhausts me, <laughs> sounds like I'm doing like way too much. Um, how do I unpack it? I teach people how to follow their North Star, whether it's individually with coaching, whether it's through my writing, because I also write, whether it's small group classes or these larger um, events that I have, whether they're online or in person. If I were to unpack it, if I were to whittle it down um, to its you know, smallest component, I'd have to say that I teach people how to live authentically and how to connect with others um, in a real and meaningful way. When you sit down with someone for the first time, and, and it goes back to even the intro of authenticity, just like you mentioned, accountability, 
reaching the goals, but doing it in a way that's true to themselves. Where do you like to start? So in other words, what are the questions? What are the things that you're looking for to start kind of figuring out, okay, this is what they're going through, but this is where we can help. You know, that's a really good question because a lot of times people think they want one thing, but deep down inside, it's something entirely different. So oftentimes I ask people to imagine their perfect day. What does that look like? And as simple as like, I wake up, do I take a shower? Do I take a bath? Do I have coffee? Do I have tea? Like, do I go out and walk the dog or do I immediately jump on the treadmill? Like, what does your ideal day look like? Um, oftentimes I'll involve a meditation in that. So like a guided meditation. So walk me through like what's happening for you. And when I do that, um, I often find that the goals that people set for themselves are not the goals that they genuinely want for themselves. They've either um, just gone with this group thing, like everybody wants this, so I'm supposed to want this, or it's a goal that's been imposed upon them um, you know, maybe many years ago from a parent or a relative or a teacher, you know, or, um, you know, oftentimes it's a partner now that sees one's strengths um, and assumes that just because that's your strength, that's how you're supposed to make your money. You know, um, and it's interesting, just kind of as a side note, in our society, we have to quantify everything. So we do, and we feel almost as if, um, if you have a gift, that that gift has to make money, right? And it doesn't. Sometimes you can just have a gift just for the sake of having a gift. But um, I digress. When I talk with people and um, whether it's the meditation or just a conversation and find out what they truly, truly want, um, then when that once that's identified, then we start taking baby steps to um, turn that really dream into a reality. So for some people, and I'll, I'll give a prime example. Um, I, a lot of times, before I give an example, a lot of times people, um, it, women especially, they know what they want, um, but they're so afraid to move towards that thing um, because there's, it's just, it's a lot. You know, it's confidence. It's what does this look like? How am I going to make money from it? Like all of those questions that oftentimes paralyze us. Um, what I think that I'm good at is I help move pe people beyond that paralysis. Um, I was just talking to a friend yesterday that has all of these amazing ideas. Um, they are not in alignment with how she is currently making her money, but they're amazing ideas. And it would bring her so much joy um, so much satisfaction in her life if she were to transition from what she's currently doing now to what she wants to do. But that's so overwhelming. So I said, let's start with one thing. And for her, I was like, let's just put one date on the calendar. One date. Let's just nothing else. Let's not even talk about what this looks like. Let's just make it real and put a date on a calendar. So um, yeah, I and it's... Um, you're shaking your head. So you've probably seen this, um, maybe not in your own life, but in other people's lives where, you know, for us, you know, looking in on someone else's life, it seems so simple. Take two steps, turn left. It's that simple. Do that. But when you're in the midst of it, it really is terrifying. It's paralyzing. Um, and without someone to walk alongside you, it may not happen. You know, and it's interesting and I have to share this, you know, and, and I'm very transparent about my own life. I am. Um, for many years, I was doing exactly what I felt I was supposed to do. So, you know, been all through my academic career, you know, teachers told me I was a good writer. You know, I was a good communicator. I should be a teacher or a counselor. Um, and I was like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. Like, okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm supposed to go to the next level. So, you know, when we're good at this, we're like, okay, then now the next promotion. I, and I kept going from teacher to administrator and I kept like going up the ladder and I made it to um, almost to the very top. And I was like, I'm not happy. This is, 
this isn't for me, but it looked good on paper. And it was what everyone else expected of me. And it took me guiding myself, asking those questions, sitting in silence, which many of us call meditation and saying like, what does my ideal day look like? It does not look like jumping up to go to a classroom at 7.30 in the morning. Like, why am I doing this? Like, that actually sounds like hell to me. So why am I doing this? <laughs> but, or, you know, um, putting out fires constantly when I went into administration, you know, and I was like, that doesn't make me happy. You know, I kind of would like good news occasionally. So being true to oneself. Well, and I think what you're talking about is a couple of things. One is experience. You've been through it yourself. So you understand the frustration, the challenges, but also the satisfaction. You've seen the hurdles and the barriers and those challenges. And you've also seen success and felt success in a different way. One that's meaningful versus one that's, you know, contrived, but it may have the title and looks good on paper, like you said. So you understand the journey on that side, but you also too, when you talk about a coach, whether it's athletics, business, you know, pick the power of a coach is that they are looking at it from a different vantage point. They have the experience. They are saying, Hey, I'm seeing the big picture. You're stuck in the weeds on the small picture. Let me help you get across the finish line over here or go in the direction you need to go and do it with a way that, you know, builds confidence and character and all these things that are going to equip you for success long-term. So I think all of that unpacks really the power of what you're doing and how you're able to help. So when you look at some of the, the themes, like we're talking about accountability, authenticity, networking, even in you know the, the beginning, as you mentioned, what's maybe one or two things when you are kind of the public speaker, but you know when you're focusing on these topics, what's maybe one or two of your favorite tips when it comes to being true to yourself, holding yourself accountable, networking, what are some of your favorite top tips in general? Uh, you know, there's so much to that. I think and I've said this before, um, I think it's, I, not I think, I know that it's important to drown out the noise. We all know what we need and we know how to move forward. And I just have to kind of put a bookmark in that. Oftentimes we're moving forward towards a goal that it's not ours. Okay, I just, I have to underline that. So my first tip is getting still, like, drowning out the, out the noise. There's so much noise coming in at all times. Even like when we're in the car, the radio's going, you know, we're at home, the TV's blaring, the kids, the spouse, whatever. So getting still and really hearing what it is that, um, that's still small voice. I'll put it that way. What is it that's really driving you? And then breaking that down um, into smaller, more digestible bites. Uh, that is it. I think most of us uh, look at the goal, whatever that goal is, whether it's losing weight, whether it's um, you know going back to school, whether it's getting a promotion, whatever it is, we look at the end goal. And, and I want to come back to that point in just a moment. We look at the end goal, but we don't think about the steps that it takes to get there. You know, whether it's writing a book, you write a sentence before you can ever write a book, you know, so you sit down and you write the sentence. Um, and the point that I wanted to come back to, oftentimes when we're moving towards that goal, that authentic goal, hopefully, um, we tend to compare ourselves to those who have already arrived without realizing that they took the very steps that we need to. So we look at the person who already has the corner office, who has the vacation home, the mansion, the whatever, you know, fill in the blank. And we look at them there without understanding where they started and what the steps they had to take to get there. So I like to think that that's what I do, that I help people um, break down the steps. Yeah. And that creates the clarity. So how can we start taking the next steps to get involved on your end? <laughs> oh, so there are so many ways. I think the first way is to follow me on social media. It's the North Star community. Uh, visit my website, www.thenorthstarllc.com. And then I have an upcoming event at Disc Insider on, excuse me, November 9th. It's Friendsgiving. It's a celebration of all things friendship, um, speed dating, 
for your new best friend, like not for your partner. <laughs> that may happen, but speed dating for your new best friend. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So come out and support that. Men and women are welcome. It'd be so nice if I could talk this morning. Men and women are welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. So just, I would love, and this is what I have to say about networking. If I have, may I? So oftentimes we go to these networking events and we have an agenda. I've got to meet this person because I want them to be my client. Or I've got, you know, like I've got to connect with five people to make this worthwhile. And I would love for people just to step back and to go into these networking events with just this sense of curiosity. Like what human can I connect with today? How can I make a new friend? And instead of give me like, I need clients, I need this, I need that. Like, what can you give? How can we be open and make those authentic connections human to human? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, the curiosity and being willing to give first and connect in an authentic way versus being transactional and you know, wanting something in return is is always to me one of the biggest keys to success when you talk about creating purpose-driven relationships, long-lasting, powerful relationships. So wrap up again with website where we go to carry the conversation forward. Absolutely. Definitely connect with me on social media, the North Star Community. My website is www.thenorthstarllc.com. And of course, if you want to email me, I, like I answer my emails, it's Michelle at the LLC.com. Love it. Well, Dr. Michelle Denise Gillis, founder of the North Star, thank you for all you do. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, it is truly my pleasure. And thank you for what you do. I really appreciate you. Higginbotham Insurance and Financial Services is proud to power the City Current Show. We're a people-first company that protects what matters most, the families, businesses, and trailblazers that keep our community going. As one of the nation's top independent insurance firms, Higginbotham is a single source solution for business insurance, employee benefits, HR services, and personal insurance that's customized for you. We're here to serve you, the people you care about, and your community. Call 866-377-1959 or visit Higginbotham.com.